All right, Aldo, we're going to try this one more time. We had just started going. We're getting into the conversation, and I realized I had a technical difficulty, a.k.a. slip. I didn't hit record. It's all good. <laughs> but Aldo, thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate it. Uh, you came down. Um, for, I'm going to start it over just as if we we're doing it, but your first um, reaction to coming through Right choice, seeing where we work here, right choice happenings, realty, the brokerage. Just want to see what you thought when coming through the doors here. Yeah, no, it's a, you have a beautiful home. It's a very nice area. And uh, like I said, I was born and raised in Port Colborne. So I uh, spent uh, quite a bit of time in the fleet and uh, not really in this area, but it's a, it's a nice, uh, it's a beautiful home, beautiful area. It was nice to walk by your office there. And uh, here we are. Thank you. Yeah. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of people think that uh, pizza reviewing is how I make my living, but that's not at all. That right out there, that wide open bullpen is where we're able to uh, sell houses and pay for all the pizzas that we do. So I'm glad that uh, you got to take a look at that. Yeah, no, it's great. A lot of people think I make millions off this pizza sauce. It's more <laughs> of a of a labor of love and uh, I enjoy doing it and I enjoy having conversations. I've enjoyed meeting quite a few uh interesting people and uh yeah so, so thanks for having us yeah so, so i'm going to uh i just told you how i first found you but now that we're recording um i had seen your posts on facebook yeah i can't remember still can't remember a couple years ago or so while doing these pizza reviews early into my pizza reviews and i started seeing on facebook all those pizza sauce and i started thinking what is it and then I'd reach out to you, but you told me that even before I reach out to you to get some sauce. Yeah, because I didn't know who, uh, you know, just on social media and seeing this Joe Gonzalez do these pizza reviews. I'm thinking, who does this guy think he is? You know what I mean? Like, I've been in the pizza industry longer than him, and, you know, he's <laughs> rating all these pizzas. And, you know, uh, I'm not a very cocky person, but I do make a very good pizza. Like, you know, don't ask me to make you a lasagna or a pork tenderloin. I wouldn't know where to start, but... Uh, being in the pizza industry for a lot of years, working there since grade eight through all of high school and even all of university, I was able to pick up a lot of things. So I said, you know what, I'm going to reach out to this guy. And uh, he went to Lakeshore. I went to Lakeshore. We had a lot of mutual friends, although uh, I am a quite a few years older than Joe. Not too and many. No, no, probably Not about 12 or 13. No, maybe. no way. How old are you? 40. Oh, I only got you by eight years. So yeah, not that bad. yeah, no. And uh, so I said, I'm going to reach out to this guy, and he wants to try these pizzas. And so I messaged him and said, hey, I want you to come make try this pizza. And he kind of brushed me off, which is fine, because I get it. I'm not a pizzeria. I'm not a, a business. I just, you know, and I'm sure you got a million people that want you to try their pizzas. And uh, and then lo and behold, a few months later, as business starts to take off, uh, we connected and made him a pizza. He bought some jars of sauce and... Let, hold on let me cut yeah. you off here let me let me even tell the story how it went down because one i don't re i still don't remember denying you when you offered pizza to me but uh i apologize for that and that would have been a big mistake if i never tried your pizza but um i don't just try everybody's pizza that offered it to me even though i know a lot of people make great homemade pizza but the pizzas that I eat are ones that are served by pizzerias because I want to do pizza reviews for places that people that watch the videos are able to go try the pizza. So gotcha. Makes I'm, sense. I'm glad that we made that up later because when I did connect with you and I asked if I could buy some sauce from you and I came to see you in Niagara Falls and I brought the fam. I was with my mom, my brother, my cousin from Toronto, my wife. I can't remember who else. I was lucky enough that you made a pizza for me to try that when I picked up the sauce and even before pulling out of the driveway, I had the box open, dug into the pizza. First bite was amazing. And do you remember if I called you or texted you to let you yeah, know? Yeah, you did message me. You really right. enjoyed it. And you said your mom had brought back a lot of memories from her, like, uh, I wouldn't say childhood, but back in her younger days. My childhood. And yeah. I, I told you that the pizza tasted like a cross between Joey's Pizzeria and Port Colburn mm -hmm. and Antonio's. Yeah. And so I worked at, I did work at Joey's for about 10 years. So a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff that I've learned, uh, some of the stuff you remember, some of the stuff you don't remember. So even when making the sauce, it's, uh, you know, you tweak some things, you add a few things, you delete a few things, you want to do something to, to your liking. And, uh, you know, I remember the type of cheese that Joey's had, the type of pepperoni Joey's had. Um, dough is something that it's, uh, 
you know, for two dollars at the store, you go buy. Although, you know, the dough definitely affects uh, mm -hmm. the type of or the, the taste of the pizza that you get. So, you know, you try to replicate, you know, a Joey's pizza as much as possible, but nothing will ever come close to to what a Joey's is. Especially, uh, you know, I cook a pizza in the oven at the house where you know Joey's had a nice big brick oven kind of thing. So, um, I've taken the exact same pizza I make at my house, make it at a buddy's house, and it tastes totally different because. Gas, electric, convection, bake, it's its all different. But nonetheless, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Well, after having that pizza, while having that pizza, it was like I turned into eight-year-old me again, and it was a flashback to Joey's. And um, there's these pizzerias that are known to be connected or have roots back to Joey's, and I haven't been able to fully connect them like I did when I had your pizza. There's a couple places that give me a little bit of the Joey's feelings when I have it, but nothing like when I had that pizza. You, it was the closest thing. I, if I didn't know any different, I would have thought I was eight years old walking out of that place yeah. and eating that pizza. Like you make such a good pizza. Oh, thank you. Yeah. A lot of people, uh, you know, when you ask them about memories of Port Corwin or whatever, you know, some people say nickel beach and some people say, you know, all oh, crystal beach and, for me, like a big thing, and even a lot of people, and you see it on these social media sites, everybody always talks about Joey's Pizza and Joey's Pizza, and nothing will ever, and nothing ever will compare to that. Um, but you can nothing try Nothing ever will compare. You make a pizza that does compare. Oh, thank you. It and you does can come compare. You can come close. Yeah, maybe not, especially maybe not to you, not quite yeah. there. But yeah, that that was fantastic. And yes, it still uh, comes up. I It's often in the comment section that when Pork Coburn and Pizza come up, Joey's Pizza is... That's a legendary place. Yeah, people like I'm on this uh, on this one Facebook page. It's called the Portal in Port Coburn, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, people always make fun of the amount of places, not just pizzerias, but selling pizzas in Port Coburn. And for such a small community, I think there's like 22 places that sell pizza, which is uh, it just so shows you that Port and Welland are very strong pizza communities, and they and they take their pizza very seriously. Some people get annoyed by it, but uh, yeah. I have a fun thing that we didn't even talk about uh, just a moment ago, but what pizzas other than Joy's did you have growing up and wh what were some of the pizzas you were eating back then? I always remember, I always have Santos and Welland and oh, the, yeah. the two of them were, were brothers. So the pizzas were not exactly the same, but very similar I to one another. I didn't know that. Yeah. So Joey's was the, the poor Coburn, Santos was the Welland. What and, were the uh, two gentlemen's names? Uh, Joey and Santo. Joey and Santo. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so they were very good. But other ones in Port Coburn that I would have, I would eat, uh, it was one called Alberto's, which I don't think you would remember. Mm. Um, it was uh, on Clarence Street in Port Coburn. That was pretty good. And then uh, I don't really remember a lot of other pizzerias in Port Coburn. Like they had, I think it was like a Pizza Delight, which was in the, the No Frills Plaza. That was more of like a chain pizza. Right. And then they had Sharky's, which was on, uh, I think it was Main Street, just quite a bit down from Joey's, but that was nothing special. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, yeah, but Joey's always would have been uh, the go-to place, and Alberto's was actually pretty good as well. And back in the day for me, the one in Welland, for some reason, I don't know, Santos was not on the radar for me, but Columbo's was a big one. I think yeah, that's where our school used to order from. Okay. Yeah, Welland, uh, Welland is just probably seven, eight, maybe even nine pizzerias deep of, of pretty good quality. It's... Uh, to me, and I like I lived in London, I've lived in Toronto, I lived in Windsor, I've lived in Niagara Falls. Really? And, uh, I just find that the Niagara region, more so Port and Welland, to me is like the pizza capital. Uh, and then the next best place for me to have pizza is at Windsor. Like I really enjoyed the Windsor pizza. Windsor pizza was pretty fantastic. So, see, I have not gone out to Windsor yet to try their pizza. There's that one pizza video. Have you seen the Windsor pizza video? Well, Again, living in Windsor for a year, one of the things that I'll test your knowledge on a Windsor pizza, what's something that Windsor does, if you know, that's completely different from over here? The shredded pat. Yeah, they do the shaved pepperoni. Shaved, that's right. Okay. Shaved, shredded, same yeah. kind of idea. Yeah. So Windsor was pretty good. I was pretty impressed. London, uh, unfortunately, uh, wasn't really, again, we're going back 25 years ago, so things might have changed. Uh, London wasn't really good for pizza. And like I was saying to you earlier, like, We'd always have friends that would make road trips up, and one of the things they'd always bring up would be a couple trays of Joey's, and uh, I think we greeted them with a high five and a hug at the car, took the pizza and started eating it, and before it made it into the house, I think the tray was done. So it was, uh, no doubt. you know, definitely one of the more exciting moments of uh, university. So you lived, you said you lived in Windsor? 
Uh, yeah, I lived in Windsor for one year. So, because they're the people out in Windsor that comment on my videos, they think to they tend to say that Windsor is the pizza capital of Canada, and I haven't gone out there to test yeah, it yet. It's but. good, and I think you'll enjoy it. Um, but I think, and maybe I'm a little bit biased because this is what my you know my right. taste buds are used to. So, you know, the pork corn Welland is more of a a sweeter type sauce mm-hmm. where. You know, you start going to those bigger centers like the Londons and the Windsors, and they don't really have a lot of sweeter sauces. Um, it's still very good pizza, but again, my taste buds have grown an appreciation for mm-hmm. what I've had locally here. Mm-hmm. And see, that's something I've noticed while doing these pizza reviews is that going around to different areas that it becomes very regional, the style of pizza. Not that everyone does it, but like when we think of Pork Holborn, old school pork Coburn, old even well in pizza even still now the the ones that are still there we think of a certain greasy wheel like a brick cheese and the sweeter sauce yeah and it's interesting when going to different areas like when i'm over there in buffalo how they have like a thicker type crust yep and even sweeter sauce yeah so they, buffalo is a different buffalo in the states is a different animal like the you know, the regulations there are much different for the fat content of the cheese and the fat content of the pepperoni. They, Even the pepperoni. Yeah, they go with, uh, you know, much thicker style pizza. Like you've got, you know, Detroit style, you've got the Chicago deep dish. And, you know, I've had quite a few in Buffalo, uh, maybe not as much as you, but, uh, you know, it's definitely thicker. It's more, uh, their sauce has some spice and some heat to it. Some of the places, uh, it's very tasty. It's very enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, uh, Pork Holborn and Welland are the two great pizza places. Um, so your sauce yes. is some of, if not the best pizza sauce I've had. Thank you. And you're, you're welcome. And um, like I've had it at Tailgates, mm-hmm. and I know we were just talking how you've been expanding it. I'd love to let's yeah, talk so about it. Yeah, so it started off pretty much during COVID, roughly a little bit oh. over two years ago. And, uh, you know, I just did it myself with just friends and family and then uh, they're like oh you should you know start selling this i'm like ah oh, you know during you know you never had time and during covid you did have time and you know you're on social media and this guy's selling a jam and this one's selling a soup and you know my wife says oh you should sell your sauce so um then we basically it was kind of a, a craft product because uh, my house wasn't a certified kitchen Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever stores I was selling it in. So I started off at, you know, at tailgates. I made the sauce at tailgates. They started using it on all their products and selling the sauce out of tailgates. Then I went to a place called Norcini in uh, Niagara Falls. Basically would make the sauce there and then he would sell it there. Uh, the trap in Fawn Hill on the highway 20. Mm-hmm. Uh, he started to use the sauce uh, on his pizza as well. So I we got two restaurants that are selling or that are using the sauce on their product. And I'd like to get into more restaurants as well. Ideally, they have like one in each city in Niagara. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then basically, you know, from those three or four places that I was selling the sauce out of, uh, it just, it got bigger and bigger. The demand was, I couldn't keep up with it. So then uh, it was being sold at Good Eats Diner in uh, St. Catharines there. Then the owner there, Paulo, was a great guy. And he hooked me up with uh, an individual in Niagara-on-the-Lake who was like a food distributor. And that individual in Niagara-on-the-Lake had a contact in Stony Creek who was uh, called a co-packer. And a co-packer, basically, uh, he was making all the sauce for me. And uh, I would go to the stores. Uh, he did the, you know, the shelf life testing, the nutrition facts, everything that needed to be done legally. It's a certified commercial kitchen. And uh, so I would go now and find all the stores and uh, I would tell them I need 10 cases, 20 cases, 30 cases. And then, uh, so now I go find the stores that want it. I place the order, I go pick up the order and then uh, we sticker it, label it and then give it to the stores and here we go. And wow. now we're in roughly about 25 stores across Niagara. Some stores do quite a bit of volume. Some stores, because they're smaller in nature, right. uh, don't do a lot of volume. But, what what are some of the stores you're in? I, you don't have to name yeah, all. Yeah, no, I won't name all of them, and I'm sorry if I offend anyone because there's like 25 of them. But no. in, in Port Coburn alone, there's uh, there's Tender Cuts, there's Dolce Vita Bakery, there's uh, nice. Sobeys. Uh, I'm trying you, to think who else there's a Port Coburn. No, and then Well, and there's Tailgates, the Cafe Amelia, oh, nice. uh, St. Catharines, there's Mitchell's Bakery, there's Good Eats Diner, there's a uh, Harvest Barn, uh, Fort Erie's Tender Cuts. Uh, uh, great memory on you. 
Yeah, so I just throw in a few yeah, out so there. Yeah, so you're up to about 25? Yeah, it's about 25 stores. So, so now, without revealing the top secret recipe, what about the sauce can you tell us that Yeah, that it's, a, it? it's a California-based tomato, which, uh, you know, obviously, you know, some people complain about the sauce being expensive in stores. You know, everybody's complaining about food prices in general, and the sauce, unfortunately, is really no different. Uh, the tomatoes come in from California. They're very expensive. It's a quality tomato. You pay for what you get. Mm-hmm. You know, people have always said, once you try looking for a different tomato, cheaper price, make more money, uh, but then you start affecting the, the quality of the product, which you don't want to do. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, so basically there's two types of California tomatoes that are in there. And, uh, and again, two when, types. Yeah, there's a, well, I don't want to get into the two different types, but it is a California based tomato. Yeah. And again, when I was making it for myself to consumer, there was a decent little profit margin in there. But now, you know, out of respect for the co packer, he's got to get his cut and the grocery mm-hmm. store's got to get their cut. So, you know, that $4 profit that used to be there is now chopped into three. So you want to try to catch on volume if you can. Yeah. And, uh, but I tell people, it's a labor of love. So I enjoy doing it. I enjoy meeting people like yourself. I enjoy having conversations and I've come across a lot of great people doing this. So it's, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. And the sauce is fantastic. And I believe I asked you this before, but I'm going to ask you again, the, the difference between a pizza sauce and a pasta sauce, because when I have your sauce, I I could see myself putting it on pasta, but yeah. Saying- so yeah, I'm not uh I'm not a big fan of the sweetness of a, of a pasta sauce. Some people enjoy it and some people do use the pizza sauce on pasta. Mm-hmm. Not my cup of tea, but if everybody's taste buds yeah, are different and to each his own. And again, I have nobody, no problems with anybody buying the product. I don't really promote it as a pasta sauce. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> again, when my family makes a, a pasta sauce, it's very, very basic. Usually, you know, your olive oil, you've got your, you know, a little bit of garlic, some onions, um, salt, pepper. You got your pork, your veal. Uh, you know, very simple like that, where with the pizza sauce that I make, it's more of a sweeter stuff. So there is some sugar in there. You've got your salt and pepper and oregano. Mm -hmm. And then there's five or six other different types of ingredients that you have. And like I said earlier, like I worked in a pizzeria, there's some things I remember, some things I don't remember. And then played with things for a couple months, trying to find something that taste buds liked. I was making pizzas for friends. Some would like this, some would like that. I had a general consensus of what people liked. Um, we pretty much went with, uh, you know, that type of sauce. And it is fantastic. Thank you. Now, um, to you, to make, I don't know if I want to call it a perfect pizza, but if you're making a pizza, what what do you want to talk about when you make a pizza that makes it so good? Because... Yeah, a lot of things have to complement each other. You know, obviously you want a a good tasting dough. So the first thing I tell people, and one of the biggest misconceptions with pizzas, everybody's like, oh yeah, I put cornmeal or I put flour on the pan or I put vegetable oil, which I never use any of that. And I think a lot of the pizzerias in Niagara would agree. One of the things that I use is Crisco. Mm. And Crisco, uh, when I tell people that, and then they message me back, they're like, this is a first line. They always say it's a game changer. It's a game changer. I'm like, absolutely it is. It adds a great (laughs) flavor to the bottom of the pizza. It adds, uh, you know, basically it's, it's lard, it's fat, right? So, Anything that's high in fat will make the product taste better. And then I always deck the pizza, meaning I always take the pizza off the pan and let it cook on the mm-hmm. grill. And that Crisco makes it uh, crispin and brown nicely. So so that's important there. Another misconception of pizza, everybody thinks, oh, you got to let the dough sit out for three, four hours and then spread it. Um, again, at the pizzeria that I would have worked at, we spread it right from the fridge right to the pan and then let it sit for about 20 minutes. Um, and it was nice and easy to spread. So Crisco is important. Uh, letting the dough sit about 20 minutes after you spread it's important having a good sauce uh i only use brick cheese when i make the pizza some people will chin out and use mozzarella which is again a misconception the problem with mozzarella doesn't add as much flavor as brick cheese some of the pizzerias will mix a brick and a mozz just to save a little bit of money which is fine Mm -hmm. but i try to do a a pure brick cheese so to interrupt you there brick What's the difference between brick and mozzarella? So it's funny you ask that because a lot of people think, oh, you mean a brick and mozzarella? No, brick is a flavor, just like cheddar is a flavor, mozzarella is a flavor. Brick is a, is a flavor of cheese. And uh, a lot of stores don't sell it anymore because people didn't really know what brick cheese was. So mm-hmm. I know like Tender Cuts and Port Coburn and Fort Erie does, Roman Cheese does. I think Norcini sells some brick cheese as well. Um, you know, it's uh big red and thorold sells it so quite a few places still do sell it but there's not a a lot that do and again it comes with a price tag so so brick is not mozzarella no 
because I've even myself been a little bit confused where brick was a higher fat content mozzarella, but it's not. You know what? I don't know 100%. Brick I, is cre- I don't know. Brick is creamier, and yeah. I'm thinking with creamier does come a little bit of a higher fat content. Yeah. To give you exact numbers, I don't know. Yeah. But again, if you make a pizza with brick and with mozzarella, you can pretty much oh, tell the difference. Totally, totally. Yeah. I, I find from numbers that I've heard, I've heard that brick is around a 28% milk fat. I don't know. And I've you, heard that mozzarella is like down. It depends. There's different mozzarella milk fats I've yep, heard. Yeah. But... So the, those are some, see, and I didn't bring up the Crisco either because I didn't know if that was a deep, dark secret Yeah, or not, and then no, Crisco, it's it's a deep, dark secret, but a lot of people know. Like even, uh, you know, even a lot of old Nona's used to use Crisco back yeah. in the day. It's uh, But then if some people are worried and trying to be a little bit more health conscious, what I tell them is use, you know, butter. Right. Um, I don't know how much better it is, and I'm sure it is better than Crisco. Right. But it's just, it's the flavor that it adds, and then it allows you to take it off the pan. And more importantly, when you're one of the biggest problems that people have with pizzas is spreading the pizza. I actually have a YouTube yes. video oh. um, that I put on there that people have actually enjoyed um, where I show people how to spread the pizza. Uh, with Crisco, Crisco acts as a glue. When you spread it, one of the biggest problems people have is a pizza pulls back. Mm-hmm. And then they're like wrestling and fighting with the pizza to get it to stay. Where Crisco acts as a glue, once you spread it, it stays. And then you go back after and just fine tune the crust a little bit and you'll notice that it's... Uh, Stays on the pan. Interesting. What would somebody search on YouTube to see that video? So basically how to spread a pizza, all dough. And then you should see it come up. Because that was my first biggest challenge when I made the pizza after we made pizzas together. Because last time you were here, we made pizzas together and they were unreal. Thank you. And I tried to do that and that's where I struggled was the the dough. So I've spread literally thousands of pizzas and, you know, I like you can anything do it with your we, eyes closed. Yeah, but it just it takes practice, it takes time. Like if you make you know one pizza every six months, it's going to be a struggle. Just I I describe it to people like golf as an example. Like if you golf once a year, yeah. you're not going to be a good golfer. You start golfing three four times a week, at the end of the year you're going to be a good golfer. And same thing goes with spreading a pizza. Yeah, you know as you do more of it, and you practice it. So you can you know YouTube how to spread a pizza, and there's thousands out there but so how to spread a pizza aldo and you should see i got about a minute 45 second video so that's gonna be a thin like how would you describe yes yeah, so i don't like a thick pizza some people like i i'm all about a thin pizza so not wood yep. fired thin no wood, wood fire is a different animal in itself yeah. and i'm actually i enjoy wood fired pizza mm-hmm. i just find it a chore because to make a good you know now they've got you know the propane ones and stuff but that's not wood fired so yeah wood fires it's it, it you got to start about a good you know two two and a half hours before you got to get the oven up to eight nine hundred then you've got to have a special dough with the double zero flour and then you're making it it's so hot you're sweating and it's actually it's, it's work yeah. okay uh, where i like the pizza in the oven to me i actually enjoy the taste of it better um though i do love wood oven pizza it's fantastic yeah. Um, but I like the pizza in the oven better. It's easier for me. It's about a, a 35 minute, 40 minute process from start to finish. And uh, it's easy to do, easy to clean. What style pizza would you call that? The one that you make? How do you? That's a good question. I don't know. Cause you know, you hear the Chicago deep dish, you hear about the Detroit style pizza. Um, I'll call it the pork over and well pizza. So to me, there's a couple of things that come to mind. Greasy wheel. Yep. And when I say that, I mean it good because of that brick cheese. Yep. Um, and yeah, I also think Welland definitely. Yeah. Pork over and Joey's Joe, but Joey's to me was like, it's almost too faint of a memory, but I find it interesting when I'm doing these pizza reviews too, because the different thinnesses and I haven't quite, it's not like I'm eating these things with a ruler figuring it out. But when I see a thin pizza, I think the Welland style Yeah. and, but an ultra thin would be wood fired. And like, that's the thin. And then it's like, there's medium thin. Sure. Like I like a thin pizza, then when I hold up my first slice, that it's still straight. And then eventually with time, it kind of flops over. Yeah. Um, so it all depends how it's cooked. And in terms of measurement, I know a lot of people do grams. I'm old school still with the ounces. I just find with, um, you know, if you're going to do a an 18 inch pizza, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of the pizzerias are 16, 18 inch. I try to stick with roughly about 18 to 20 ounces of dough Mm -hmm. Um, because if you do it too thick i'm not like i don't like a thick pizza some people put like you know 30 36 ounces of dough which is crazy yeah um so again for those of you that are listening you like a nice thin pizza if you're making an 18 inch pizza probably stick with about 20 ounces of dough and that'll give you a nice thin pizza do you think the ratio goes the same 
with the circumference for about an inch an ounce or is you know it's a pretty fair estimate you know give or take a little bit but it, yeah because you know at home i have a 16 inch pan i got an 18 inch pan i use a, a 20 ounce dough obviously with the 16 inch it comes out thicker um and i do that for the kids because they like it a little bit thicker right um, myself i like a thinner pizza so you know roughly about you know an inch Per one ounce kind of thing. And see, when I made the pizza after you showed me, I completely butchered the dough, but I had your sauce and it was delicious. So mm-hmm. like it was, I was trying to recreate your creation. So I completely botched on that. Like I give myself nearly a zero, but <laughs> as far as flavors went, I yeah. was using the ingredients. And like when you use the right ingredients, it's you're, you're onto the right thing. But yeah, if you're trying to replicate something, yeah, not there. And that's why a lot of people order out just for the convenience. They can't be bothered, but. I look at making a pizza as a, it's fun. It's social. You know, let's say you're doing it with a few other people. You drink some wine. You have a good time with it. If, you know, you have kids, somebody else has kids, the kids could all be making pizza too. And kids always enjoy making pizza. They love throwing the cheese and the pepperoni on there. And then it's their own creation when the pizza's made. And, of course, they love eating the, the pepperoni and the cheese while they're making it. So it's fun. So um, one thing that you had mentioned, and that's the flop of a pizza, because a lot of people... Um, have like a negative connotation with flop and like you just said it after it sits for a bit it gets floppy versus when it's first hot or yeah like if you eat a pizza like if you're and here's the problem with pizza too sometimes pizza doesn't travel well like chicken mm-hmm. wings like when i eat chicken wings i don't get chicken wings delivered because they're sitting in that styrofoam mm-hmm. container they get soggy to me i want a wing right out of the deep fryer mm-hmm. nice and hot in front of me and same thing with a pizza um you know so when you get a pizza out of the oven at the pizzeria and it's sitting in a box being delivered for 15, 20 minutes. It gets soggy. still tastes great, but the, yeah. you know, the, the firmness won't be there. So I like always checking, you know, the firmness of a pizza when it comes out, when I, you know, eat a pizza at the restaurant. See, because I find when the pizza is right out of the oven, it tends to be more floppy because it's still hot and the cheese and the sauce where like a cold pizza is almost always firm. Firm. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, that's right. But there may be... When you do it thin, probably right out of the oven, it definitely holds the integrity. Yeah, I'll always put like wax paper on my pan because I've signed something that I don't put wax paper. It gets a little uh, soggy kind of thing. So oh. I enjoy, I just enjoy, as soon as I get it out, I always hold the pizza up and just see, you know, it's just something you just check out. And so Something that we talked about earlier, but we haven't on this one, was the pepperoni that was used on Joey's back in the day. Yeah, so a lot of the pizza is not just Joey's, but a lot of them in Niagara used it was a Schneider's pepperoni. They came in big, huge, long sticks. They were about, I'd say about three feet. They were frozen. We'd throw about 10 in, and then we'd basically slice it. And then the Schneider's all of a sudden just stopped supplying all these pizzerias. So they kind of all had to scramble and uh, you know try to find a different pepperoni. And you notice a lot, some of the pizzerias have the same, but a lot of them are different. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, you can still find a, a stick. It's roughly about, I'd say, 18 inches or so maybe. Mm-hmm. You can get it. I know Freshco in Niagara Falls sells it. Food Basics in Port Coburn sells it. And you cut it up nice and thin, and it kind of brings you back the memory of the, the Joey's pepperoni. A lot of people mm-hmm. nowadays, I know you enjoy the, the cup and char. Mm-hmm. And uh I use a, on some of the pizzas I make a, a Venetian pepperoni cup and char. Yeah, uh, not as spicy as the ones uh, in Buffalo, but it does add a nice flavor to it. Totally. Um, but sometimes to mix it up, I do enjoy the Schneiders. And uh, again, if you're ever trying to replicate that Joey's, you know, use the brick cheese, uh, you use a good sauce, you use that uh, Schneider's pepperoni, and it's it's pretty tasty. Now, do you think it's more controversial pineapple on a pizza or like we just talked about the good old days when Joey's was using canned mushrooms. Yeah. I'm not a big pineapple <laughs> and everybody's different. Like my brother-in-law <laughs> loves pineapple on his pizza and that's great. Uh, I'm not a big pineapple fan. Yeah. Uh, canned mushrooms. Like we talked earlier, I love canned mushrooms. I Me too. Would take canned mushrooms over, you know, freshly cut mushrooms any day. Um, Again, it's all personal preference. 50% of the people love canned mushrooms. 50% love the... Why do you think canned mushrooms have a bad rep? I just think some people find them rubbery. And to be honest with you, no matter which type of mushroom, I don't find a lot of flavor with a mushroom. It's more of a, a texture thing. Yeah. Um, but I just think sometimes a canned mushroom just complements a pizza better than a fresh mushroom for some reason. Yeah, I, I'm with you. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, at some point, I would love for us to get together, make a pizza with the canned mushrooms and cup and char pepperoni and probably one with the Schneiders. And like, yeah. that, that's going to make me think I'm, 
a child again and be perfect. Sure. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I love it. I love it. Um, um, what were what were some of the other things? Now, now we have we talked about everything that we talked about earlier. Yeah, I think did, we're pretty much all cut up from the uh, the non recording phase. I, I still apologize for that one. That's okay. Mistakes happen. Technology. I'm terrible with technology. So, um, were we talking about the regional stuff earlier, or was that already on this one? How the different Windsor was that? Yeah. Before? So I think uh, I think we talked about that already in. The, like even with the pasta sauce, it does very well in Niagara. Um, haven't really made its way to Hamilton yet. Like every region has different styles of pizza. So in Niagara, like my goal when establishing the business was I want to get a, you know, a good strong hold on Niagara, mm-hmm. and then eventually start moving its way down the QEW. Uh, I know we're in a store in Vineland. Uh, we're at a food land in Vineland, and uh, you know it does okay. Not a ton of volume, nowhere near the volume that it's in Niagara, but. Again, Vineland isn't really used to the style of pizza that we've had in this end, you know, in Port and Welland kind of thing. So um, one of the things that some of the grocery stores will allow me to do, it's kind of it's kind of like the, the Costco models, go there and offer samples. Right, um, which is great. Yeah, so I would make the pizzas at tailgates because that's where they use the sauce and stuff and, you know, bring in four or five trays and just let people sample the pizza. And, you know, I know at Costco a lot of times, Guys like you and me probably go or just enjoy the free food. Love it. Um, but a lot of people, they taste something, they enjoy it. And it has happened to me too. I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. You'll buy the product. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, it just, it takes time. It takes a lot of effort. Totally. And again, having a busy family life, trying to, you know, I would love to go to all these grocery stores and do samples, but just the time doesn't allow itself. So I'm going to pick one or two this summer um, that basically the product isn't well known in those communities, those regions, and then try to push it. Have you done the sampling yet? No, I'm looking to do one uh, probably in a couple of weeks. One in Saint, one in Saint Catharines, and then uh, one in Smithville. So, just a little bit of experience that I had way back in the day. My parents uh, made uh, red pepper relish that okay. we were getting off the ground before I was in real estate, and I did sampling at Camisos in Niagara mm-hmm. Falls. Yep, and I did it. I think I only did it one time, and when we did it sold a whole bunch because it, it was a fantastic product so i think you're going to have really good success with it because i cannot imagine one person trying it and not like it. maybe somebody that some people are sensitive to sweet maybe sure. yep. maybe but yours it's not it's not like too sweet at all but no you, I would, I would say that you would have in the ninety percentile of people that try it that like it. So that I think that's going to work really well for you. Yeah, but yeah, and talking to different people, like I've got friends that specialize in marketing in college, university, and they said that that's one of the the best things that you can do to promote your product. You know, advertising obviously is great. Mm-hmm. You know, branding your product, but having people sample it there, enjoying it, um, is a great way of selling the product. So yeah, 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 sure. and then. Uh, yeah, a little bit off topic just with the sauce. It's just, uh, and again, mm-hmm. I, I think, I don't know if it was this podcast or the other one. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we've done some school fundraisers and stuff, mm-hmm. which has been very good and very helpful. We've done uh, some people with wedding and party favors. Yeah, so that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, which is good. So trying to branch off in that business as well. And, you know, people just get sick of, oh, here's a spoon or here's a bottle of wine or here's a picture frame. You know, if I went to a wedding and I left with a nice jar of a, pizza sauce with my friend's uh, logo on there. I'd be pretty excited to try it out. If I got invited to a wedding and I knew it was your sauce, I, I'm RSVP. <laughs> it's like an auto RSVP. Yeah, so the one wedding that did it, I think they ordered about 150 jars, which was pretty cool and uh, haven't had any feedback yet. The wedding was just uh, a few weeks ago and stuff. So yeah, and you know, with the schools and the fundraiser, like you're not making as much money as you would selling popcorn mm-hmm. or magazines or something, but it's something that's completely different. And, uh, you know, if you're looking to make a few grand for your organization, it, uh, yeah, it was pretty good. So, so if there's any local schools around here that are thinking about doing it, you would definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Them. I usually throw a post out there and, uh, you know, on, I'm big on the restaurants Niagara site, which has been a good way of promoting the business and even my own social media sites and being a teacher myself and, uh, you know, uh, just people want to explore and, you know, here's the numbers. If it's great, awesome. If not, not a problem. Yeah. Yeah. The sauce, fantastic. Um, we didn't talk about it before, but it is pretty cool that you are a teacher full time. How long have you been doing that? What do yeah, you teach? I've Where do you teaching, teach? Uh, I've been teaching twenty five. This will be my twenty fifth year. All high school math at St. Paul. You know, you don't come off as a teacher. Yeah, and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but you, you I, I don't know. I wouldn't even. It's just 
like when we're talking, I guess we talk about pizza a lot. So. Sure. Yeah. So you think that'd be more in the food industry or food, culinary yeah, kind of thing? Yeah. And yeah. And it's it's funny because a lot of kids will come to class and they'll, sir, I hate your sauce. Sir, how's your sauce? I'm just like, oh God, this is so pretty. It's pretty funny. And, uh, you know, some of the kids, you know, really love it. And uh, actually, even with the sauce, it's kind of funny. I tell kids, like, and even some of my friends, like, you know, some people love opening up a jar of Nutella and they eat it with a spoon right away. And the sauce, I'm not a big fan. Like, I love the sauce, but I'm not a big fan right out of the jar. Mm. So I tell kids, like, wait till the sauce is cooked and with the oils of the cheeses and the pepperonis, everything complements each other very well. Like, you know, when I go to my mom's house, I get some bread and I dunk the sauce. It's fantastic. Right. This sauce here, don't taste it right out of the jar. It's when it's cooked. Um, it tastes fantastic. So I tell students that because I don't want them to go have a spoon and just be like, oh, what am I eating kind of thing. So I'm sure it's still good, but you're probably, uh, I'm sure you're right that yeah, it's at its best. It's, uh, yeah. So just funny with teaching. And then, like I've said before, like got uh, three kids at home, three boys under four. And then, you know, you try to teach and coach and all the, the busyness that comes with the teaching profession. And then, uh, you know, your kids are all involved in activities and trying to juggle a a pizza sauce business it's uh how you know, do you balance all that because... i got a very supportive wife and uh she's nice. great and it's funny I even tell people i get uh, the kids involved in the pizza business as well they help peel off the stickers and put them on the jars and uh nice. you know it's not a big job for them but hey, every little bit that they do helps and uh yeah so it's good that's awesome what, what do you teach and where uh, i teach at st paul i've been teaching math for uh 25 years and it's been a great school. It's been a lot of fun. And, you know, a lot of people, when I first started teaching, like, oh, every five, six years, you got to be on the move, professional growth, meet different people. And I'm one of those old school Italians where I don't like change. And uh, I've been blessed to work with uh, some fantastic people. But the kids at the school are, uh, are wonderful, which have made it, you know, a, a very enjoyable. So I got about five, six years left. I'll write it out there and see where the pizzeria business. Uh, Only five or six more? That's it. Really? Yeah. So, and so that's the the pie symbol comes from the math. That's right. That's yeah. right. So it's all those pizza pie sauce and the pie being the 3.14, but pie representing pizza pie. And yeah, that's where it came from. So the label is very, very straightforward, very plain, very black and white. Um, you know, I always looked into, everyone's like, oh, you got to get your picture on there and you got to get color. And uh, I would want to try to keep costs down to a minimum. As soon as mm -hmm. you start getting into pictures and colors and uh, it's crazy how expensive things yeah. become. So. Um, no, I, I like the basicness for sure. Yeah, I like it. It's uh, it stands out. People enjoy it, so yeah, we'll keep it simple. Is there anything to do with the recipe with three point one four or anything, or just no? The play on no, the pie? it's just uh, the pie represents the pizza pie. That's it. So I like it. Yeah. I like it. Um, yeah. See, now I'm having a hard time remembering what we talked about the first time versus now. Yeah, I think we covered everything from the first time. So I don't know if there's anything else you want to add in. And uh, like Did I said, like today. Uh, one of the things I've loved about the sauce business and, you know, being in education is, uh, you know, I enjoy meeting people and I enjoy meeting students, I enjoy meeting parents, I enjoy meeting colleagues. And, uh, you know, today, for example, I went down to Mitchell's Bakery in St. Catharines and uh, uh, the other day I was at Sobeys in Welland on South Pelham. And, uh, you know, I enjoy meeting these managers and these store owners that are great people. Some of them, you know, are a challenge to deal with, but uh, the owner at Mitchell's yeah. today and uh, talking to the manager, they just... They love supporting local and, uh, you know, and a lot of the products they say they cater to is, you know, of an elderly crowd and, um, you know, they try to keep prices reasonable, which is great. And, uh, yeah, so it's just nice meeting them, very humble people. And uh, I've always heard of Mitchell's. I've never been there and I was just very impressed with, uh, you know, the bakery, the deli, everything that they have there. It's a, it's a very good business and I enjoy awesome. meeting good people like them. Yeah, that's awesome. I've actually never been to there, so I'll have to take a look. Yeah, Definitely. So. And, and we, we had talked about um, that at some point you do want to take it to the online game. That was definitely before versus now because that's yeah, something so, I'm, I'm excited for yeah, for the, you. And I've done, like, we've shipped out to BC. We've shipped out to Alberta. We've shipped out east. Uh, we've shipped to London because uh, a lot of people in those respective areas where people from Niagara say, oh, we can't find good pizza out there. And <laughs> so they'll order, like, a half a case or a case. But you know, shipping a, a half a case out there is like forty dollars in uh, you know in fees as well through Canada Post, and yeah. so I know in the online industry there are different ways of uh, you know sending things out cheaper. But again, I just want to get the business established first, and you know, yeah. then tackle the online stuff a little bit later, kind of thing. So for me, it's a it's a slow, gradual. Yeah. growth of the business i like i like the strategy you're taking i think it's great i i 
a big proponent of online and everything, but I think you building your base first in stores and everything I think is great. Yeah. And earlier, like mentioned, when you do get to online, I hope you have great success with that too, which I'm sure you will. You'll have hurdles like we talked about. Oh, shipping. Ab- absolutely. But the margins are nice when you go direct to consumer. That's right. That's right. So yeah. you bypass, you know, you bypass the, you know, the fee of the, you know, the take the, what the grocery store yeah. wants kind of thing. You can kind of keep that. And, uh, yeah. you know, the good thing with the grocery store, it's when you deal in them, we're currently working with, um, you know, the Sobeys and food basics right now. You, when you deal with head office. It's a little bit more of a challenge, a lot more paperwork, um, to get through. So we're currently working with that. It's been a, yeah. a few months and hopefully we can, uh, you know, we have some connections that we can get uh, all the food basics and the Sobeys from, you know, Port Coburn all the way to Hamilton because, you know, they're bringing in thousands of uh, customers a day. Yeah. And uh, but we do like the, a lot of the, the small stores that have supported us. Like, you know, there's, uh, you know, the Mitchell's Bakery, like I said today, there's, uh, you know, the Tender Cuts, the Norcinis, the Roman Cheeses, the La Farinas and stuff. So a lot of these small mom and pop shops are great walking us in and uh, yeah, and they have some good volume as well. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So little bit of a pivot we touched on a little bit before but uh from pizza to pasta because you being a food guy we were talking a little bit about how you like gnocchi and i was trying to figure out what what other foods you like outside of pizza too because i find i i love food like i got food addiction sure oh yeah there's nothing wrong and my students there's actually a couple of pages they have on instagram i think it's called i might even say the word wrong st paul memes or memes or whatever Mm. they are and uh you know um you know, they always make fun of, uh, I start eating at nine in the morning till two o'clock when I'm done. I have a little, it's like a buffet in class that I'm eating all the time. So food's an important part of my life. And uh, I'm a big carboholic, so I don't really yeah. eat a lot of bread, but my pizzas and my pastas uh, are definitely a big part of my life. So what, on, on the daily pizza pasta? No, I don't do it daily. Like pasta, I have once a week, every Sunday we do the uh, old school Italian thing, visit the, the family in Port Coburn. And pizza, probably I'd say at least once a week for sure, if not once every two weeks. So as you get older, you got to start becoming a little bit more health conscious. So we, I, I could eat pizza every day, but oh yeah. can't do it. Same, same. Yeah. Uh, we, we do the same. We still go to my mom's Sundays for dinner. Nice. Pa- pasta isn't always on the menu, but is it always on the menu? for Every some? Sunday. Yeah. Same one or does it get changed? No, it changes. Up? You know, sometimes you'll have like a ravioli or you have like a gnocchi or you have like a regatoni or, oh. you know, yeah, you just definitely mix it up a little bit. So. Always homemade? Uh, not always, no. No, it, it all depends. Sense. Yeah, sometimes they're busy and they can't. And yeah, yeah. If they have time during the week, they'll make a homemade thing and freeze it. So, But I'm just uh, grateful, whatever they do, having a cooked meal for you, no complaints. So when you get a pizza, how do you decide? Yeah, I just, uh, it's funny. Like, I always tell everybody, like, even a bad pizza is not a bad pizza. Like, you know, yeah. there's some pizzas I can eat the whole thing. There's some... Uh, like even a, a delicio, you throw a delicio in front of me, I'm still going to eat it. Am I going to yeah. say I love it? No. Yeah. Um, I feel there's yeah. never been a pizza in my life where I've taken two or three bites and throw the whole pizza in the garbage. Mm. You go through it, you might only have a couple slices versus the six or seven you traditionally have, but um, there's really never been a, a bad pizza. So. I've had that once. I don't know if you ever seen that. I had one pizza that I couldn't get through. No. It was no. a p- pizza vending machine out near Blue Mountain. Okay. Uh, yeah, that whole process of a pizza vending machine doesn't sound good. Although, the, I don't know if you would have been able to get through it because I, yeah. I I gave it a score of 0.7 <laughs> just because it was there. Yeah. But it was literally in this box in the middle of wherever, I for stainer. Yeah. And like it, it, it was, all it is is a frozen pizza that they heat up in there. It's not like... Yeah, they're putting the sauce not on it and the cheese, assembly. putting it... In, okay. So it's just frozen and like... Yeah, I forget how much it was. If it was 10 bucks, 13 bucks, but there... It was the lowest of ingredients. Yeah. Like the cheese was like modified milk. Sure. I don't know what, like ketchup yeah. or sauce. Yeah, it just the whole concept just doesn't sound good at all. Yeah, it wasn't even cut, yep. right? So... But yeah, I, I feel you. Most most pizzas, like that's the thing. When when I go, it's funny when I do these reviews too because everybody's got a different opinion, right? My favorite pizza doesn't mean it's going to be your favorite. Right. And who's right? We're both right. We don't that's right. right. But like some of the pizzas I have, like people tend to say I'm a, a generous score, which maybe I am. But I love pizza so much, and like if a place is serving pizza and they're like open. 
I don't know, it tends to be something that people are buying. Now, I'm not going to tell you, like, some of the pizzas I was starting to have in Hamilton, like, I think Hamilton has some really great pizzas, but they have so many, like, conveyor belt, yeah, really generic uh, uh, cost of efficient, effective pizzas that if people will buy them because they're cheap, but mm-hmm. not great. But, yeah, yeah, for the most part, pizza is... The best pizzas that I find, like, as soon as you start dealing with conveyor belt, I'm just, I'm a little... Uh, leery on that the best pizzas yeah. that i've found are, and even the ones that i would have worked at they've got the nice bricks in the oven um you know and you'll see that in a lot of pizzas bricks here in, in the oven yeah what do you mean so i i know deck ovens so they're i call them brick ovens so there's they're gas ovens basically but the ones that i worked at at joey's and and even uh, you know at tailgates has it they're like little they're bricks inside the oven so basically the bricks heat up you know pizza's cooked on a pan in a deck oven i don't know what a, what do you mean by a deck oven like I don't know, like a, when I go to any pizzeria, like the yeah, deck. A, that's right. Yeah, you post, so the bottom layer would be gas, and then there's like two levels kind of thing. The, the bottom one's a gas, okay. and then uh, you see the flame, and then there's bricks, just bricks. Interesting. And then, yeah, and then the bricks get obviously nice and warm, and then, uh, you, you know, the pans, the pizza's cooked on the pan, and then eventually with about three or four minutes left, it's called decking. You take the pizza off the pan, it goes onto the brick, and then uh, the bottom crispens nicely, nicely, and then the pizza's done. See, and talking about combining those things, the my favorite pizza that I had in Niagara Falls was pizza on Dorchester. And lo and behold to me, they start in a conveyor belt mm-hmm. oven, but then they take it out and put it in a deck oven. Okay. So that was really interesting because I, I don't, I have deck ovens in me, not, yeah. but... It worked, and that kind of does make sense because, like, a conveyor oven can can work at first, but you, you got to finish it off. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of, you know, and I've had, like, some of the Geno's pizzas and stuff yeah. have been more of a like, conveyor. And don't get me wrong, I've enjoyed it. They've been good, but yeah. it doesn't compare to that of a, a deck yeah. oven, like you said. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, is there anything you want to talk about or... Uh, no, I just, it's, this has been great doing this. And like I said, with the pizza sauce business, it's been, uh, it's been a lot of fun. I've come into contact with, you know, a lot of people from high school that I haven't seen and like old teachers and I've met a lot of new people, which is great. And I've learned so much and there's been a lot of people that have coached me through things. And uh, yeah, like, you know, you're a teacher for 24, 25 years, but when you get into the food business, it's something that's uh, completely different. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's been fun. It's I been think- busy. I personally think you have a lot of legs with it. Um, like with any business, there's challenges. Yeah. And one of the things I want to do, and I think I spoke earlier, like the sauce, like tailgates use it and does very well. The trap does it and does very well. And, um, you know, I think you had a little bit to do with uh, introducing me to the person at the trap, and it was great meeting mm-hmm. him. He's, he's a great man. He's got a great business. And uh, he was very open-minded about changing his pizza. And then even, you know, at tailgates, working with Ryan was great. We, you know, fine-tuned his pizza and he he had a good little product but we made it better Mm -hmm. um you know i've gone into a few other places uh some people aren't very responsive to Mm -hmm. to change you're probably looking who's this you know weirdo coming in and wanting me to change pizza but ideally i like to get the sauce uh i said i don't know if i said earlier like in one in every city yeah um to use the sauce and uh I would love to see you at more pizzerias. So yeah, I know if any pizzerias, our owners are watching this. Definitely, I think they should reach out to you to yeah, see. Yeah, and there's a very uh, a cost-effective way that I, that I deal with the pizzerias to make it beneficial for them and for myself as well. And uh, yeah, so I just, I like to get, you know, it doesn't have to be a pizzeria. Like, uh, you know, both those places, they're really, they're not pizzerias, but they do sell a decent volume of pizza. They're more like bar restaurant kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'd love to get into whether it be a pizzeria or a bar restaurant all over Niagara would be great. You know, you don't want to have three in one city because then it's going to be like a very similar product. Right. But you know, if you can get one in each city in Niagara and it's, it's just something I'd like to do. Yeah. And um, I don't know if you remember or if you've seen or not, but when I did redid the well and pizza reviews, tailgates finish, I think top three. Yep. And like I, I'm sure you had a good uh, influence on that. And to me, even though that was third, to me, it's almost like one because he's not a pizzeria. And like, 
Yeah, like Rose City and Luciano's to me, I, like I love those ones. Yeah, they're both Rose, uh, Rose City and Luciano's are, are fantastic. And uh, tailgates, I do enjoy. It's different. He's got like a little bit of a thicker crust kind of thing, and yeah. uh, he could thin it out a little bit. I'd yeah. like to see it. But if people like that, if the yeah, customers and that's, like and it, and I'm a thin crust guy myself, but he and I tried convincing him, and but he's like, no, our customers like this. I'm like, hey, you got to do what customers like, and if they like totally. it, absolutely, so, totally, yeah. Did we talk about your YouTube video on this one or was uh, that the last one? I'm not one? too sure, but there is but, a, one of the biggest problems that people have, you know, with making a pizza, spreading it. And uh, so I do have a YouTube video. I don't remember the exact name of it, but I just tell people, it's just Google how to spread a, a pizza dough, all just all dough, put my name, then it should come up. It's about a minute and 45 seconds. And again, I make it look easy because I've spread thousands in my life, mm-hmm. but uh you know, it, watch the video as you do it time and time again, it becomes easier. So that's on YouTube. Yeah. How to, to spread a pizza dough, all dough, and then it should come up. Okay. So I, I, whether I said it before or not on this one, but after we made pizza and I went to try and make it, mm-hmm. I definitely screwed up the dough part. Yeah. So when I watch this video again and I try to make pizza again, yeah. I'll probably screw it up again. Yeah. And I just, you keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. And eventually, it'll be your How many do you think it would take me before I could do it? You, and not as good as you, but to have it. I'd say probably if you do it at least 20 times. 20. Which, yeah, don't do it like once and then two months later, yes. go do it again. Like if you do it consistently uh, about 20 times, I think you'll be okay. Because, yeah, when you did it and you make it, it is even. And that's something I've seen when doing the reviews too that I find. I don't find that works well is when the dough is not the same consistency. Yeah, through. so the key with that, you'll notice in the in the video, is you got to keep, you know, the one hand is kind of pulling the dough from the center, but the other hand has to stay flat. When the hand is flat, you're causing an even proportion throughout the entire pan. Where some people tend to, like, you know, they kind of put a cup or a curve on their hand, and then as soon as you do that, then there's basically going to be gaps all over the place. Interesting. Where the one hand you pull, the other hand keep flat. If you keep it flat, it'll be the same consistency throughout. You're so, an artist. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> it's just you got again. You got years and years in the business, and again, even after I left the pizzeria, I always would make pizza all the time with friends and family, and you just always have that art with you. So, so is there anything you want to talk about no. about pizza sauce? Pizza. Anything outside of it? No, I think we've covered all the angles and just a. Uh, you know, I'm a big, uh, big on basically supporting local. And uh, thanks yeah. to, uh, you know, all the stores that have allowed me to go in. Uh, thanks for all the people that have purchased the product. And, uh, you know, there's so much good local product and talent here in Niagara that we should, you know, try mm-hmm. to sell. And you see so many businesses closing down every time on you on social media. You know, this food truck's closing or this business is closing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's so many good things in there we should try to support each other if possible so i totally agree and it it seems like it is uh tough out there for a lot of people we were talking about it a little bit out there just with interest rates on the rise costs of everything inflation it's it's tough for a lot of people and i agree like i I grew up on a farm so i know how important local is and like yeah it's tough out there for some people a lot of people but yeah however we can help each other is great absolutely and people that do want to find you what are, what are the ways that they can find you where yeah, are so you? i'm big on social media like i have my own personal facebook page aldo sika and then obviously i'm on instagram uh the business is on facebook and instagram it's a uh, aldo's uh, pizza pie sauce and how do you spell that a l d o uh, a L D O S and then pizza P I Z Z A and then pie P I and then sauce S A U U C E. So all those Sika and then all those pizza pie sauce, both on Facebook and Instagram. So yeah, a lot of people have reached out there. Some people have emailed, some people have actually called my phone. Uh, some of the, the pictures that I posted a while back, I had my cell phone number actually on my label, which was kind of a, a rookie mistake on my part. And then now obviously the cell number is not on there, but some people, if you Google image it, you'll see my cell number pop up. So I'll get the odd, you know, text message or phone call with someone looking for information on pizza sauce, which is pretty funny. So yeah, but anyway, you can help people out and uh, yeah, I don't mind. And then when, when and where can people expect that sampling? Because I know if it, if I didn't have a direct connection, I'd be really looking for it. Yeah, to so that. I'll throw something on social media. I'll let uh, there's a couple stores I want to work on where we're trying to basically, uh, you know, the volume is decent, but we want to pick it up a little bit. And you know, it's an area that I don't think people really have tried a lot of the sauce. So we'll probably make four or five party trays. 
not going to cut them in 24. I'll probably cut them in something like 36 or 48, give little samples, yeah. Yeah. kind of like the Costco model. And, uh, you know, hopefully it works out for people. I'm sure some people come back five or six times just to have lunch there. But uh, <laughs> I yeah, know I will be. Grocery store out in Smithville and one in St. Catharines that we'll tackle probably within a couple of weeks. Yeah, I think that's going to be great. Yeah, thank you. Anything else? No, it's been uh, wonderful. Thanks for having me. Sorry about the screw up. It's all good. That, that kind of threw to do. off the, the, the rhythm of nothing else to do. To do on a Thursday things. night. So, <laughs> no, it's all good. It's uh, Thank you. Yeah, I'm glad we could put this together. We worked around our schedules. I wonderful. appreciate it. Thank you. Although, I hope all the success. Uh, I look forward to watching you grow with it all. And yeah. Thank you. I enjoy watching your videos as well. Yeah. Thank you. Good stuff. Have a good night. <laughs> you too. See ya.